So hey guys, welcome to the channel. So I haven't posted in a while, as you may or may not know, and that's because I've been getting a lot of things in order, getting ready. Um, if uh, you're not aware of what's going on in society today, then you're uh, probably living under a rock. So I wanted to make this video um, about probably one of the easiest and simplest ways to build a battery backup for what I consider really cheap, considering what's out there on the market right now as an all-in-one. Well, I don't necessarily need an all-in-one. If we lose power or something like that happens, uh, my main concern um, is to not lose all the food that I have stored for such an event. Um, right now I have three full refrigerators and one full freezer full of food. So I want to be able to keep that food um, in case the power goes out. As long as the sun keeps shining, I'll be able to do that. So, without further ado, let's jump in. What I want to talk about is this cart that you see right here in front of you. Um, very simple, very easy to build. Doesn't require a whole lot of skills to do this. And this is probably one of the quickest, easiest power stations to build. And it's a significant amount of power. So, let's dive right in. And I'll be going over the cost of what this thing's going to cost you. Um, I have it all broke down, give or take a few dollars. This is what you're looking at. So, this cart. The cart came from Lowe's. Now, I, I assume that everyone has a Lowe's close to them. If not, you can buy one comparable. I'm not telling you you have to buy this one. I'm just telling you this one worked out best for me. And I'll show you why here in a minute. So, the cart is about $120 plus tax. So easy to put together uh, it comes in a box like everything else you have to put it together but if I remember right it was like what one wrench and uh, a couple sockets to put the thing together and it's got wheels on it um, you can roll it around pretty easy and it is rock solid man it is just rock solid so I looked at a bunch of different carts um, and this is the one that I wound up with so um, I'll drop a link in the description if you want to go take a look at it, give you some ideas, right? So, 120 bucks for the cart. The cart is, so, the overall dimensions of the cart is 34 inches long and 17 and a quarter inches wide and roughly 32 inches tall, okay? So, there you have it. That's the cart. Next, let's go into the batteries. So the batteries are Power Queen 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. And they fit, as you can see, perfect. I had to make no modifications on, on this cart. The batteries fit in there perfect. So um, you can get these on Amazon right now. I think they're 250, 240, 250 bucks. Um, lithiums went down in price so pretty good batteries I have 12 of these batteries um, all together on different projects that I've been working on and I've had zero issues with them great customer service so no problems there next let's talk about this pure sine wave inverter it is a Renogy 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter and I have several of these as well I've had zero issues with these things. So this thing on Amazon is about 270 bucks plus tax. But like I said, I have had zero issues with this um, inverter and I'm running four different ones right now. And I have two 30 amp Renogy Adventure Sarge controllers. They're PWM, like I said, they are not MPPT but this is a cost-effective cart, right? Plus I didn't really need a uh, MPPT charge controller. You can pick these up on Amazon. I wanna say they're about 60 bucks, uh, 60 or 70 bucks a piece. Um, they are capable of handling 50 volts of um, solar input up to 400 watts. So if you take a look what I've got here, this is four 100 watt panels 
and I have two arrays. So I have those two arrays wired in what's called a series parallel configuration. So that gives me, each panel puts out roughly 20 volts and 5 amps. So wired in series parallel, that gives me 40 volts and 10 amps, which both these car charge controllers, which they're identical, these charge controllers are capable of handling. So if you do the math, 40 volts times 10 amps gives you 400 watts. Now you're probably not going to get that out of any solar panel on the planet. There's thousands of videos out there talking about um, what a panel is actually capable of in optimal conditions and I've yet to see a solar panel put out what it's rated for. Neither here nor there. Like I said, I have two panels. It's winter right now so only my two top panels are getting sun. So I have those two top panels wired in series which is 40 volts and 5 amps. Charge controllers hopefully will do their job and do whatever conversion it needs to do to put out optimal performance in charging the batteries. So last but not least guys, one of the things that I put on here which I feel is probably the most important part of this entire cart is a battery monitor. So this is a Renogy 500 amp shunt and a battery monitor. So as you can see, the batteries are fully charged at 400 amp hours, um, which equates to roughly 5,120 watt hours of power. 5.1 kilowatt hours of power, however you want to look at it. So significant amount of power in this little cart. I have the batteries all wired in a parallel configuration using four gauge wire coming up to a shutoff coming up to just a two lug distribution right everything comes off of this second lug I have a one aught wire coming up feeding my positive side of my inverter on the other side same thing I have the negative terminals wired in parallel coming up to a lug going over to my shunt, coming through my shunt, going into the negative side of my inverter. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell, guys. No frills, relatively inexpensive, significantly inexpensive compared to what's out there. Um, you're gonna pay for an EcoFlow or something along those lines for a high-end um, solar power generator. I looked this morning for a Blue Eddy and an EcoFlow, and I get it, it's an all-in-one, right? But I, I don't necessarily need an all-in-one. I just need to be able to keep my refrigerators running, maybe a couple lights, um, and that's about it. So for an EcoFlow at half the capacity, 2,048 uh, watt hours was 1,600 bucks. So you would have to essentially double that to get the amount of power that this car produces. So, like I said, no frills. Uh, pretty easy to put together. Um, I know the question I'm probably going to get is, well, how much will it run? Well, you can do the math and conversions however you want to, which is uh, another video for another time. But let's take a look. i got a freezer, refrigerator back here on my back porch and I have the good old kilowatt meter, plus I have my battery monitor. So we're gonna plug it in, and we're gonna take a look and see just how much power one refrigerator freezer pulls. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in our kilowatt meter. We're gonna turn on our inverter. We're gonna plug in our extension cord. And we're gonna go plug in the fridge. Well guys, it looks like it's pulling 115.7 volts, just like it's supposed to. It is pulling 2.6, 2.59 amps, and it is pulling 166 watts, 167 watts. So we'll watch it for a minute, let it equalize a little bit and see what happens. Looks like it's pretty much equalized out at 166, 167 watts. So let's take a look and see what the battery monitor is putting out. 
Battery monitor is 13.1 volts right where it's supposed to. We've got a negative 15.6, 15.5 amps, and it's pulling 205 watts. So 204, 205 watts. I'm going to trust my battery monitor on what is flowing through the shunt and coming out of my batteries. So if you read this the way I read it, which is probably right, um, you can run at this load for 25 hours. So probably what's going to happen guys, if I lose power for any significant amount of time, I will consolidate, figure out what I can lose and what I can't, and I will go down to two refrigerator freezers, um, probably the big freezer that I have in my garage, and then this freezer out here, and refrigerator, and I will consolidate. So running two refrigerators um, is going to get me roughly 11 hours, um, 11 and a half hours, which should be more than enough time to get me through the night. Anything in your fridge, anything in your freezer, you're going to be able to save, right? So if the power's out for two, three, four days, however long the power's out, as long as the sun's shining, you're going to be able to run that. So real quick, let's plug our solar panels in and see what happens. This is that solar array over there. And this is the solar array over here behind me. So let's give it a minute, see what happens. So of course the sun just went behind a cloud, but it looks like it's pushing 18.6 so it's pushing 13 so it's pushing 13.3 volts 13.4 sun's coming back out pushing 5 amps over here 5 amps over here so we're still a negative 5 amps between 4 panels which is 400 watts of power. Two panels on the top wired in series. Two panels on the top wired in series. That's 400 watts. So guys, as you can see, we are still in the negative, but we're roughly getting 120, 90. So it's fluctuating quite a bit, right? But judging by this battery monitor, we roughly can run like this for 77 hours. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, being able to run two refrigerators off of this cart, to me, is a win. So I would definitely have to rearrange my solar panels to maximize my input back into my batteries, but that's no big deal. Um, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, but for right now, that's just 400 watts of power when actually I have 800 watts of power. Charge controllers are capable of handling that input. The batteries are more than capable of pushing two refrigerators and then some. Drop a comment below, let me know what you think. Just make sure that you have a big enough solar array to put power back into this cart if you're sucking a lot of juice out of it. That's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.